one man, four wives, a suspicious death, and a disappearance. You were almost glued to the TV to see what's gonna happen next. What else can happen? The life and crimes of Drew Peterson have made international headlines. He says he believes that he helped you dispose of your wife's body. No. Can you at least respond to that? No. But now... You were able to stay anonymous in an insane situation. Exactly. Speaking publicly for the first time in this Crime Watch Daily exclusive. I wanted the first time that I came out to be important. Drew Peterson's own sister-in-law is breaking her silence to talk about what it was like to live under the same roof with a killer. Did you believe he was responsible for Stacy's disappearance? Before former police sergeant Drew Peterson was a household name for all the wrong reasons, Norma Peterson knew him as the sometimes over-the-top brother of her husband, Paul. He is who he is, as you learn from hanging around with Drew or spending any amount of time with him. He pretty much goes by his own rules, always has. Especially, it seems, when it came to women. There was no amount of self-control. He just figured, OK, you know, each time he had remarried, he probably went 10 years younger, 10 years younger. He was married four times. First, there was wife Carol. After two kids and six years of marriage, she caught Drew cheating, and that was the end. Then there was Vicki. She lasted 10 years before asking for a divorce when Drew started dating this woman. Her name was Kathleen Savio. Kathleen's sister Susan still remembers when the two got together. She was real excited about meeting a police officer, and she thought Drew was really nice looking and very, very nice. But he was also very, very attached. Well, she didn't know about uh, that he was married. She thought that he was separated or divorced. And according to Susan, Kathleen didn't find out until much later, only after Drew made her wife number three. She had two beautiful children, boys. She loved him with all her heart. Those were her boys. But by most accounts, her relationship with Drew deteriorated fast. Well, I would see black and blue marks on her, and I asked her what happened, and she'd say that she just bruises real easy. She bumped into something. Then after 11 years of matrimony, Kathleen caught Drew in a very familiar position. Someone said that everyone knew that he was dating Stacy. As in Stacy, soon to be Peterson, wife number four. When Stacy first met Drew, what did you think? I didn't like him because she was 16 years old and, you know, she'd always get phone calls when we were together. And when she turned 17, poof, I meet Drew. She had an apartment and it was fully furnished. And here's this cocky old guy. Drew's sister-in-law says her husband wasn't too thrilled either. What did Paul say? He was like, I have daughters this age. How, how can you do this? But he was going to pretty much do what he wanted to do anyway. He was a beautiful 17-year-old girl. You know, how am I supposed to say no? When Kathleen found out, she hired a divorce attorney, then sent Drew to live with Stacy. He had literally bought a house right around the corner so that he could be in the same neighborhood as his kids. However, the details of the divorce settlement with Kathleen had still yet to be finalized. She was set to receive some money from Drew. Yes, half of his pension, um, I believe custody of the children, and uh, half of the house. Basically, it would, it would ruin him. Instead, a different kind of ruin. Two weeks before Kathleen Andrews' settlement was to be finalized, neighbors found her dead in an empty bathtub, a one-inch gash on the back of her head. The day Kathy died, Drew called Paul and said what? He had said that they had found Kathy dead at her home. They're kind of looking at me sideways, so if they say anything to you. A coroner's jury of six would soon rule the death, an accident, accidental drowning to be precise. But Kathleen's sister says she came to a very different conclusion and that it happened as soon as she heard how her sister died. I immediately said, did Drew kill her? The Friday before she passed away, I called her and she said to me, I'm not going to make it. 
she said, Drew's going to kill me, and it's going to be an accident, and no one's going to find out about it. And when they came back and ruled her death accidental? My family and I, we, we our jaws dropped. We just couldn't accept that. But there was little they could do. Drew had reportedly been questioned around the time of the death, but had an alibi. He was with Stacy. Drew's sister-in-law had little insight about that period. We weren't really speaking to Drew at the time, really. We weren't. No, we had had um, a falling out. But with his third wife buried and behind him, Drew was free to make Stacy, 30 years his junior, wife number four. Soon after marrying Stacy, the couple had two children, Drew's fifth and sixth, if you're keeping track. Stacy was the reason that we all reconciled. It was her that brought us all back together because she insisted that her children were going to know all of their aunts and uncles. She even took care of the two children Drew had with Kathleen, who moved in with them after her death. That's the kind of person she was. But somewhere between the beginning and four years later, things changed in a big way. That morning started like any other. My husband had gotten up to watch the news as he normally does. It was 5.36 o'clock in the morning and he woke me up to tell me that Stacy was on the news. State police say they're searching specific areas for the wife of a Bolingbroke police sergeant. Drew Peterson's wife number four was missing. The first thing that came to my mind was he did it. He did it. When she first went missing, you don't know what happened and you're thinking, the worst and you think she's cold out there or she's lonely out there and you think god is there anything else i could have done but according to drew there was nothing anyone could have done after four years of marriage and two kids he says stacy went missing by choice she just kept saying stacy ran off she took the car and she took money she took the bikinis and she took the bikinis yeah she you know she she left me and what did you tell him she wouldn't leave the kids however there was evidence to suggest stacy had been trying to get away from drew anyway she said she was going to leave she was filing for divorce that monday so that monday after stacy went missing she was going down to file the paperwork. Well, that week, yeah. Do you think Drew knew Stacy was going to file for divorce? Yes, she told him. Apparently, in the four short years they'd been married, things had quickly fallen apart. A fall brought on, Cassandra says, by Drew's insane jealousy. Like her going to the grocery store, he'd check the receipt and then see what time she checked out at. And if she wasn't home in that 15 minutes or whatever, He's accusing her of cheating. Stacy reached out to local pastor Neil Shorey for counseling, and he says there was one session he'll never forget. It was the last time he ever saw her. She at first just to told me more things about her, her life and her marriage, how, how hard it was, the jealousy. And, and then she looked at me, and I just had this sense that she was about to say something profound. I said, whatever you want to tell me, you're free to do it. And she, she sort of stared at me, and she said, he did it. I said, he did what? And she said, Drew killed Kathleen Salvio. Drew killed his third wife. What did you say to her at that point? I believe one of the first things I said to her was, what do you want me to do with this information? And she said, I don't want you to do anything. I just want you to know. A few weeks later, she was gone. But in her absence, new questions came rushing in. A time WGN News reporter Lourdes Duarte remembers well. It just became such a media frenzy because the story kept getting stranger and stranger. You were almost glued to the TV to see what's going to happen next. Do you think Drew fed into the media attention? To me, it looks pretty obvious that he wasn't shy of it. I'm going to come camp myself in front of your house and see if you like it. Larry King Live, The Today Show. Drew was everywhere, even participating in a radio promotion called Win a Date with Drew Peterson. But all that attention may have backfired. And then Mark Furman was in town, I believe, and kind of investigating some of this, and I think that started 
all the attention going, hey. So he's got a fourth wife who's missing and a third wife who's gone. So maybe we should take a, a deeper look into this. Six feet deeper to be exact. In the last half hour, crews removed the coffin holding the remains of Drew Peterson's third wife. At one point, um, the family was able to work with um, a, a private doctor, and they were able to exhume her body, and that's when they found so much more uh, to this story. I remember seeing the casket being lifted out of her grave, and I just thought, you can bury evidence, but it will come back to get you. The day that Kathleen was exhumed, we were asked to go to the coroner's office. Once there, they were met by renowned forensic pathologist, Dr. Michael Bodden, famous for testifying in a number of high profile murder trials, including OJ Simpson and Phil Spector. And uh, he said Kathleen was murdered. According to Dr. Bodden, a number of deep bruises indicated an extreme struggle in the hours before Kathleen's death. Drew retired from the force not long after that, but far from laying low, he continued his bizarre on-camera behavior. What's going on today? What's going on today? Yes. We went to McDonald's. Okay. We had Happy Meals and McRib sandwiches. How's that? <laughs> But Drew's sister-in-law tells Crime Watch Daily that behind closed doors, the family had an agreement not to say anything. We moved, probably moved into Drew's place about the second week in November. And I think it was an understanding that we had that there's four children running around. You really don't want to have those kinds of discussions when you know one of the kids might be walking in. Outside, the questions were getting louder, and then a few months after Kathleen's death was changed from accident to homicide, the former police sergeant was pulled over while driving and placed under arrest. At trial, a number of people testified, including Pastor Shorey, who said what Stacy had told him about Kathleen. That, along with evidence investigators said proved Kathleen was killed and her crime scene staged. It was enough for the prosecution to rest its case. When you see him in the courtroom, does he acknowledge you? He gives me dirty looks, yeah. And I just smile at him. The jury deliberates, and when the verdict comes back, it's a shocker, at least for Drew. Guilty of murder. Here he is in court responding to the ruling. I did not kill Kathleen! To which Kathleen's sister says, Yes, you did. When they said guilty, it was, it, it was just so emotional. And I, my sister and I hugged and we said, we did it. We did it. We finally did it. We got him. Drew Peterson is given 38 years behind bars for the murder of Kathleen Savio. But where one family has answers, another has none. Stacy is still missing. We still don't know anything else about her whereabouts. Um, and it's been nine years. As for Drew, for once, he's not saying a word, but this man is. You don't think he killed Kathleen? Absolutely not. After years of wondering what really happened to Kathleen Savio, her family finally has answers. But Drew Peterson's fourth wife, Stacy, is still missing. A question mark left hanging. During that time, did you believe he was responsible for Stacy's disappearance? Oh, how do I, I have to be so, mindful of the fact that her children could be watching this. I believe it will eventually come out. Drew still contends she ran off with someone else, abandoning him and their kids. Talk to me about that. It's hard because I know she didn't leave. She didn't run off. I knew right away that Drew killed her. It's just a matter of where he put her. Just speculation for now, but in the days after Stacy's disappearance, it almost seemed like suspicions confirmed. Robin, startling new revelations about this mysterious container. Reportedly, Drew's stepbrother helped him move some sort of large container out of Drew's bedroom. A relative of yours saying he helped carry a rectangular container out of your home on October 28th. I have no idea what anybody's talking about like that. Warm to the touch. Nope. He says he believes that he helped you dispose of your wife's body. No. Can you at least respond to that? No. Not at all. No response. Talk to my lawyer. 
We tracked that stepbrother down so I could talk to him myself, and though he wasn't willing to go on camera at this time, his relative did have this to say about Drew. I don't think that will ever give the information. You don't think he will? So far, that's proven to be true. Drew was questioned, his house was searched, but still, no sign of Stacy, and he maintains his innocence. And not just when it comes to Stacy. We're gonna win this case. We're gonna get him out of jail on the murder. Drew Peterson's latest attorney, Steve Greenberg, is in the process of appealing Drew's conviction for the murder of his third wife, Kathleen. I firmly believe he did not commit that crime. You don't think he killed Kathleen? Absolutely not. Would you say it's a coincidence that Drew's fourth wife goes missing and his third wife is found dead then? How do you explain that? I don't need to explain that. And frankly, I was hired to work on Kathleen's case. I have never looked at Stacy's case. But those also weren't the only two issues at play. What about the most recent case involving Mr. Glasgow? Well. <laughs> I was asking about Will County State's Attorney, James Glasgow often seen in front of the cameras as the stern counterbalance to Drew's antics. And not too long ago, Drew was caught on tape saying this about the man from behind bars. Right, but the thing is, he's still never let me alone. If I get out, he's going charge me with things. And that's not all the recording caught. If Glasgow is dead by Christmas, when would that put you out? Turns out Drew was trying to hire a hitman to take out the prosecutor. But there was a little problem in his go-between. That inmate was wearing a wire and was able to turn this information over to authorities. Before you give the green light on your uncle, right. talk to me. We're going to talk tomorrow. Then. Yeah. That one took me by surprise. Why? I can't believe he was that dumb to do something like that in jail where they, he knows that conversations are being recorded all the time. Why would you do something like that? Intelligence notwithstanding, Drew is convicted and is given an additional 40 years behind bars. You and your family feel safer now? Or? Yes, absolutely. Defendant having the audacity uh, to try to have me killed for doing my job is just a moral outrage. A psychopath, that's what we're dealing with. Drew Peterson now spends his days behind bars after being convicted of murdering his third wife. His fourth wife is still missing. But in the wake of Stacy Peterson's disappearance, her sister-in-law, Norma Peterson, is the champion of a new program created to help empower victims of domestic violence. This is the first time that I'm speaking out on this subject. My name is Norma Peterson, and I am the sister-in-law of missing Stacy Peterson. It's called an evidentiary abuse affidavit, a file victims can create online at documentTheabuse.com that serves as sort of a Dropbox for all of their evidence of abuse. Also what it does is it in some ways gives the victim a sense of, okay, if anything happens to me, hopefully the person that perpetrated this will be held accountable. I've used it quite a number of times right here in this community and actually around the nation um, who have been ab abuse victims. And uh, not one person that we've done the evidentiary affidavit of abuse with has disappeared. I think that's powerful. Hope for victims. No one can say for sure if it would have helped Kathleen Savio, but her sister does feel it may have helped bring Drew to justice sooner. What do you miss the most about your sister? Her smile her laughter, her hugs. I miss everything about her. I just want her back. As for Drew's fourth wife. We hope someday to bring her home. And from the women still in Drew's life, a few parting words. Give it up, game over. There are four children who are going through just such an emotional time and that they have to look out and see all this. They didn't ask for any of this. You're gonna to have to answer to God one day. Karma's a bitch.